The Foo Fighters have just put out their 10th record, Medicine at Midnight, so now we can finally do the Top 10 Foo Fighters albums. Woo! So, this is a band I've been listening to for a decent while now, about 10 years, and so I've been around for like half their career. Well, I mean, technically, I they're only a couple months older than me, so I've been around uh, their pretty much their entire career. Um, Anyway, let's get started, yeah? Yeah, so Sonic Highways is unfortunate because it came out right after Wasting Light. So it was pretty much the first new one I heard. I mean, I wasn't there for the release date of Wasting Light, just a little bit after that. So yeah, going from that to this, it's quite the letdown. The story behind it's really cool, recorded in eight different cities, and this cool ass artwork where they combine like a landmark from all the cities and the big eight in the middle because it's their eighth album. That's fucking sick. But as it turns out, the making of the album is more interesting than the album itself. However, there are still some decent tracks I might add. I still like something from nothing, I think. Uh, it gets you really pumped up, like especially at the end when he screams all right and then he just they all just go nuts. I think that's kick-ass. Uh, Outside has a really great beginning, but that's about it. I Am A River is still super awesome, and Congregation has some great leads in it, and Subterranean could have just been deleted. I mean, the only thing that song has going for it is that sick-ass transition from that into I Am A River. Fucking awesome. Overall, again, just a big letdown, especially following this one. Overall, one by one is not nearly as strong as the three albums that came before it. However, I like Overdrive, it's a pretty catchy song. Tired of You has a really cool somber feeling to it. Come Back feels like the epic on this album. All My Life, classic of course. And then, my personal favorite Foo Fighters song, Times Like These. So, with all that praise, you might be thinking to yourself, so why is this album at number 9? And that's simply because I would give all 9 of these albums a positive review, so at this point, it's all about preference. I mean, I like all the songs I mentioned, but I'm only really in love with times like these. The rest are good, I like them, but overall, you can tell that things were not going very good in the band during this time. Now, Echo Sounds, Patience and Grace, this one has two songs I love. Pretender is the obvious classic, and then Let It Die, I think, is great. It only really dawned on me the last time I went through this album, but yeah, it's a great song. Erase, Replace, and Come Live are decent, and Summer, what the hell is this? And Summer's End is a fun song too. So overall, there's nothing really inherently wrong with this album. I just, you know, prefer all the albums over it. Yeah. Alright, the double disker. Right off the bat, I want to say I think disc 2 is way better than the first. Alright, I think disc 1 is pretty hit or miss, and the later part isn't anything great. However, the title track is probably my favorite intro to any of their albums. It just gets you so pumped up and ready for this two album journey. And then boom, it kicks right into No Way Back, which is a super jam song, and then you got Best of You. First three tracks, fire. I also really liked Free Me and End Over End is perhaps their most underrated song ever. But then you got tracks like Resolve and The Deepest Blues Are... The Deepest Blues Are Black. <laughs> Long ass title, but yeah. You know, those songs are just so whatever. And then disc, disc 2 has some fire with What If I Do, Friend of a Friend, Over and Out, yeah, and uh, Cold Day. Cold Day in the Sun. Cool ass song where Taylor sings and Dave is back on the set. First time, I'm assuming, since Color in the Shape. So that's pretty awesome. Overall, the first disc, I think, holds it back from being really great, but it does stand out from the rest of their catalog. Look man, 
I don't care what nobody says. Concrete and gold is fire. Up until Arrows. Run is one of the heaviest songs they've ever done. Make It Right has some cool-ass riffs in it. Skies and Neighborhood is pretty simple, but super catchy. La Di Da is more along the lines of Make It Right. You know, it's kind of heavier, but not really. But it's still a fun song to listen to. Dirty Water is... Uh, it's the first half is a nice clean piece and then it ramps up the second half and then Arrows is my favorite song in the album. I think as a whole it just it just works the best. Arrows such a good song. But after that the album goes ooh, insert slide whistle. Ooh, it drops hard. It drops like a cinder block falling off the Sears Tower or Willis Tower, whatever the fuck they called it now. Happy Ever After, Zero Hour is just whatever. Sunday Rain is like three minutes too long. It's just the same shit over and over. The line is not as good as they promote it as. And the title track, um, look, I think it would have been so good as like an outro track, like... You know, it's like around two minutes where they do like the the, the first big bang, uh, right before the second verse comes in. If they just did like the final, that that final explosion they do at the end, and just cut out like that verse two and just had that first verse, and then it just explodes and then it fades out like a two minute outro track. I think it would have been great, but yeah, as it is, yeah, it's I hear you, Nick. It's too long and kind of weird and not really a song it's just an outro but a six minute one and it's really a shame on my first draft i actually had this album at number three because i really do like those first set of songs that much but unfortunately man those last couple they it seriously just holds it back <laughs> all right so i already reviewed this album so just to summarize Mass at Midnight, they were going for a summery party album, and they absolutely nailed it. This is perhaps the most fun album of theirs to listen to. Minus one. There's just so many interesting rhythms going on, and I don't know, I might just be on the high because this one just came out, so I've been listening to it a lot, but I am pretty comfortable in saying that this is definitely in the top half of the discography. The self-titled has something in common with In Your Honor, in that the first three tracks are straight fire. And then you got other ones like Weenie Beanie, which was pretty much White Limo, way before White Limo. I don't recognize all the songs just by looking at the titles, but man, when this album is on, I instantly recognize them as the songs come on. I don't know if the whole thing is like super great, but this is easily the most rockin' album the band has ever done. <music> Color and the Shape is another album that had a drastic change since my first draft. To be honest, I totally forgot how good this one was. I mean, besides the classics like Monkey Wrench and My Hero, uh, fuck, every, every time I think of the song My Hero now, I'm going to think of the damn anime because I've been binging that like a motherfucker lately. Uh, review coming up soon, actually in like seven hours from recording this. Um, and because I know someone's going to say it, yes, Everlong 2, obviously a classic, but... I have a really, me and that song, it's complicated, all right? It's complicated between us. But anyway, uh, Poor Brain is super underrated. February Stars and Walking After You are really nice, clean contrasts. I mean, there really are like, I don't even, I can't even think of one weak track on this album. Like, this is the classic Foo Fighters album. And can I just say, like, it was kind of a really big dick move at the time, but Dave redoing all the drums, I think, in the long run, just helped it so much. Because, looks for real, this album just feels like he took all of his best ideas 
for what he did on the self-titled. And he just elevated it even more with this one. And if the color and the shape is an extension of the self-titled album, then... There is nothing left to lose. Straight up feels like they took the first two albums, mushed them together, and the best parts of both of them got put right into here. As if this is like the third version of a Pokemon game where uh, these two are the base games. You got gold, silver, and then you got crystal, baby. And what do I keep saying over and over again in this video? The first three tracks, Fire, Stacked Actors, one of the most unique songs in their entire discography, kicks off this album, and it just, it's just, fuck it. Like, the production on it is great. Um, then you got Learning to Fly, or Breakout, I don't know which one's first. Uh, then it goes into Breakout, and another classic song, especially the last part of it. And then Learn to Fly, which I swear to God, I thought this song was a cover for the longest time. Because it actually doesn't even sound like them. Uh, you might think I'm crazy, but like... Seriously, when I, first, when I first heard Learn to Fly, I was like, this is a pretty good cover. I don't know why I thought that, but I did. And then it continues with Generator and M.I.A. The only songs I don't even care for too much are Aurora, Ain't It the Life... And live in skin but that's three songs out of 11 and even then I still enjoy those songs but I'll only listen to them if I'm going through the entire record phenomenal album and that leads us into number one which I have referenced like three times in this video already <laughs> yeah wasting light is still perfection. I mean, sure, I always forget Mr. Misery is a thing, but I'll still jam on it anytime. Unfortunately, I think... <laughs> shit. Unfortunately, I think the band peaked here, but the fact that it took them seven albums is pretty ridiculous. Now, I know a lot of you are like, yo, the color and the shape is just the Foo Fighters at their best. I'm looking at you, Nick. Um, I'm sorry, man. I... I just can't. I can't. Besides uh, Medicine at Midnight, this is the most fun album to listen to. I mean, look. Look look how similar these goddamn albums are. Look at the backs. <laughs> Fuck. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you guys to look at the backs, but I'm looking at the backs, so that's why you're seeing the front. Um, but yeah, look at the backs. I mean, they just fucking look the exact same. Like... Maybe that's why I like this one so much, too, is because, like, it just reminds me of Wasting Light. And I'm sorry, I fucking love this album. And I remember watching the Grammys that year and watching Album of the Year get snubbed by that fat piece of shit. But without a doubt, this is one of my favorite albums of all time. Top 10. If I ever do a top 10 albums of all time, Wasting Light's on there. Let me tell you. I even got the poster over here. Uh, I, I would have put it here, but I uh, I put it over there many, many years ago with thumbtacks, so I can't even take it off the wall without just destroying my fingernails. So that's why it's over there. Um, fuck, I'm rambling too much. I'm sorry. So there you guys have it. Be sure to let me know what your favorite albums are. And I got I to gotta give a quick shout out. Uh, if any of you watching are massive fans of Foo Fighters and you can't get enough of them, then you gotta check out my homie Nick Scarpinato's Happy Foo Year playlist where he goes in-depth to the recording of every single one of these albums and covering a song off each of them. And who knows, you might find uh, a certain someone you might recognize in a few of those videos. So uh, head on over there and show my man some love. And thank you, Nick, for letting me borrow your album really quick while you go teach some kids how to sing. And I'll tell you who's next after Steven Wilson. Um, while I prepare for the largest ranking I will ever do on this channel, uh, we're going to do two more Dave Grohl Associated projects. Some small, small discographies while I prepare for the big one. Uh, I don't know which one I'm doing first, but let's just say he plays drums on both of them. So, I know, that's like five bands or something that come into your head, but... 
I'll see you then, alright? Take care.